Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Repiron, and today we're going to be doing a very long list of overclocks for Deep Rock Galactic. This is going to be our tier list, going over every single overclock. We're not going to be going into great deal, uh, a great amount of detail for each of these overclocks, uh, and then we're going to be ranking them in our tier system. So let me start off by saying that this is completely my own opinion. Um, and if you have a different opinion than mine, that is perfectly fine, as well as my opinion will likely change in the future on some of these overclocks anyway, as to where I would put them. Um, for our tiers, we have S tier, which is just the best, over they're overtuned, overpowered, really crazy strong overclocks that go up into S tier. A tier is all the great overclocks, they're solid all the way around, you, you would like to have them. Um, a lot of our overclocks are going to end up being here, I think. B tier is above average overclocks. You would much rather have them than not have them most of the time, uh, or they give a pretty good advantage to the gun, whatever it might be. C tier are kind of the highly specialized overclocks. So overclocks that you might need to build for, but may do one job particularly well. And then D tier is kind of the underwhelming overclocks that I kind of wish would get changed. There's only going to be a few of these. Uh, most of our overclocks, I think, are going to be sitting between the B and A tier, uh, with some of our crazy ones sitting in S tier, and then just a couple in C tier, I think. All right, so first up with this list, we're going to be going over the gunner overclocks, then we're going to be going over the driller overclocks, then the engineer, and then finally the scout. There will be time marks, hopefully down below if I remember to do that. If not, pester me down in the comments to do that. Uh, about each of these, this way we can actually have kind of time blocks for each of them. So first up, we have gunner and we have the minigun. And our first one is a little more oomph. This gives us a little bit more damage and faster spin-up rates. This one is so good to have with the minigun. It makes the minigun feel so responsive. And it might be my favorite one to have on the minigun. Or, yeah, probably my favorite one to have on the minigun overall. A uh, little more oomph is going to go into A tier. It's all around really good. Then we've got the thin drum walls. This increases your cooling, which is good. And it also increases your total ammo. So you get more bullets for the minigun. Again, a solid overclock. B tier, it's not as strong as like a little more room for some of the other A tiers we're going to see, but it's all around really nice to see. And then we've got Burning Hell, a situational overclock that uh, when your gun is overheating or getting heated up, I guess, starts to burn all enemies around you, lighting them on fire. If you take this with the, um, the aggressive venting, you're having even more fire around you. And if you uh, start, then you can also start fearing enemies around you. Really good all the way around. I really like Burning Hell. It pairs extremely well with Volatile Bullets. Um, it can also pair really well with anybody running things that get more damage on fire or more damage from status effects. So Burning Hell, probably A tier. It's really good uh, in a group. It's pretty good in solo too. If you're not running like the Volatile Bullets, it's not as strong and I'd probably put it into B tier, but it's still a nice bonus. Our next overclock is the Compact Feed Mechanism. This one... Reduces your rate of fire with the minigun, which isn't a huge deal. Uh, it doesn't lower it by that much, and you get way more bullets for the minigun, which also feels pretty good. This one I'm going to put into B tier as well. I don't know if it's as good as thin drum walls. Uh, it feels nice, but uh, only if you're really running max ammo or if you're running a really high damage secondary, like running elephant rounds or running lead spray or something like that. Our next overclock is exhaust vectoring. This increases the spread of the minigun, but increases the damage. This one also feels really good. This one's A tier. It's not, I don't find it as useful as a little more oomph, but it is a good overclock, uh, especially if you take the reduced uh, spread in tier one. Then it's pretty manageable. It feels really good when it's actually spun up. You're doing a bit more damage. Then we've got Lead Storm, which Lead Storm gives you more damage, but you can no longer move with your minigun, which is rather annoying. Uh, you can't move with it. You Well, you can't walk with it, I should say. It's not that you can't move. You can still move on a zip line. You can still move on Doretta or I guess on Molly if you have Molly moving. Um, it doesn't matter if you don't need to move on things like holdout missions where you have to hold an area for so long. And of course, you can always use your shield. So it does have that. But I still don't like this one as much as these other two damage ones. So I think I'd put this one into B tier. It's still good. It can be really good on escort missions. But outside of that, it's kind of okay. And I find it a little bit frustrating to use it outside of that because it's just, I, I like being able to move even if it's at 50% speed with the minigun. It does give you a little bit more time to back up when you're firing at things or push forward when you're firing at things rather than resetting completely. 
It's also not bad if you have low gravity on a mission because then you can jump higher. So it's not as big a deal then. And then our last minigun overclock is Bullet Hell, which a lot of people really love this one, and I don't blame them. It is super fun. This lowers your damage, and it increases your base spread by a lot, but each of your bullets have a chance of ricocheting into nearby enemies when you use this. They can also bounce off some enemies into other enemies, which does make this one really fun, and if you do make kind of a, like, if you have a driller drill a hallway for you and you fire down the hallway... This one is pretty entertaining to watch, and it can work then in wide open areas, and if you're running and gunning with the minigun, this one is just not that reliable. I'd put this one into C tier. It's fun, and uh, it can be good under certain circumstances, but uh, sometimes it's just kind of awkward to use, too. Then we move on to the auto cannon. Our first auto cannon overclock is the composite drums. This gives you more ammo which is great. It also uh, increases your reload speed with the auto cannon, but that doesn't really matter. More ammo is always nice to have. Um, the auto cannon doesn't necessarily need it, but it feels good to have it. So eight or B tier. Uh, then we have splintering shells. This increases your area damage and increases your area effect radius. Really good, uh, really solid overclock for the auto cannon. I've really come to enjoy this one. This one's going to go up into A tier. I think that it's uh, very good. I guess I'll just put these in one after another. Um, some of these would definitely be lower A tier if I'm comparing them to others. But uh, yeah, I think I'll just keep them here if they're a different weapon and keep them going that way. That way they're a little bit more spread out. So anybody jumping into these time spots can kind of see that. Then we have the combat mobility. This gives you increased movement speed, which is really nice to have with this. Uh, this also reduces your spread, which is really good. But it does cut your magazine in half with the auto cannon, which is a little bit annoying. I would put this one into B tier. Uh, I don't like the cut in half magazine. Uh, the base spread and the, the faster move speed is really nice to have on it, though. The, the move speed in particular feels really good with the auto cannon. so B tier. Next one is Carpet Bomber, which increases our explosion radius by quite a bit with the auto cannon and gives us more area damage, but it cuts our uh, direct damage in half. So we're better against crowds, not as good against single targets. I'm going to put this one into A tier. I think it's good. I don't think it's necessarily as strong as the Splintering Shells is, though, anymore. I think that Splintering Shells uh, is honestly outperforming it most of the time when I take it. It still feels good, and it still feels great against crowds. Uh, it also feels decently good against big things, but I find that Splintering Shells generally works a little bit better. So, And I don't think they're quite S tier. I don't think they make the auto cannon uh, crazy. Unless you're just arguing that the auto cannon is already S tier, in which case, well, sure, why not? <laughs> it is pretty good. And then we've got Big Bertha. Big Bertha gives us uh, more direct damage per shot, but it cuts down our ammo. It cuts down our magazine. We also lose our top rate of fire. Uh, it's not as high as it once was. I think our top rate of fire is 5.5. .5. With this, it's 4.0. So slower rate of fire, but more damage. Um, this one is the highest damaging single target uh, auto cannon that you can run. So it works really well against dreadnoughts and stuff like that. Works really well against Praetorians. All around pretty solid. I'd put this one up into A tier too. So it's not as strong against crowds, but it's still decently good against crowds. Then we've got the Neurotoxin Payload. This makes it so you lose out on damage and you lose out on explosion damage, but you gain explosion radius and all of your bullets now have a chance of splashing uh, poison damage onto enemies, which deals damage over time at 12 poison per second for 10 seconds. Uh, the poison also slows, and if you, they have uh, regenerating bugs, it negates that. Same with anything that's lit on fire or anything that's frozen, I think, too. Can't regenerate. I could be wrong about that one. Uh, this one's really good. This one is arguably one of the best overclocks in the game. It makes it so your crowd control is insane with the auto cannon. Uh, you also don't need to be that particularly accurate because any round that splashes poison splashes poison to everything. So you can stack up damage per second really fast with this one. Uh, I'd put this one up into S tier. Next we have our Hurricane, which first up we have manual guidance cutoff. This makes it so once you let go of the trigger, you no longer have a guidance system, but your projectiles move 33% faster than they normally would. This one I don't really care for. Uh, this one's D tier for me. It, it just doesn't really feel all that great to use this one. Uh, it doesn't feel that much better. I, I, I say it actually doesn't feel better than just the base Hurricane does. And it's probably one of my least favorite overclocks for it. It doesn't even do anything that entertaining or crazy. It's just your rockets move slightly faster. Um, just not a great overclock in my opinion. Then we've got the fragmentation missiles. This increases your area damage and your area explosion radius. 
This one's pretty good for the auto, or this one's pretty good for the hurricane. I'd put this one up into B tier. Um, it, it just helps with the hurricane in general, and I like the AOE build for it. And then we've got the overtuned fiend mechanism. This increases your velocity and increases your rate of fire. This one's really good on the auto cannon. The rate of fire is huge on it, so, or sorry, hurricane, not auto cannon. I'd put this one up into A tier. It feels really good overall. <laughs> Next up, we have the plasma burster missile, which cuts your ammo in half, cuts your damage in half, uh, both your area damage and your direct damage, as well as your area effect radius. Your missiles also move slower, but they have a faster turn rate with this. But now all of your missiles can punch through enemies multiple times, explode each time that they do, hitting all enemies around them. Uh, this one's actually pretty good once you get used to it. It does take a time. It does take time to get used to though. It's not one that you can just pick up and use right away. Um, I, I mean, you can, but it's going to feel a little bit weird the first time you use it. You're going to have to kind of get used to that. And uh, it does pretty high single target damage because the missiles can go through the enemy multiple times. You can do uh, lots of crowd damage and it's really fun to use. The main problem with this one though is that it's very buggy, at least at the moment. Uh, it does more damage than it should against the flying rocks. Don't know why that is, it's just a bug in the game. And it also um, doesn't always work if you're not hosting the match. Sometimes your missiles just go missing, you, they just disappear. So, or sometimes they'll punch through something and then just, they disappear after that. So they're, it's very inconsistent if you're not hosting. And if you're not hosting, then this one's probably D tier. I wouldn't really recommend taking it all that often just because of how much frustration there is. Once they, once they get it fixed, uh, it'll be better. And if you are hosting it, then like it's A tier. It's pretty good, I would say. Then we've got Mine Layer. Mine Layer lets you shoot all of the rockets down into the ground there. You can no longer, uh, turn the rockets anymore with the hurricane but once they stick in the ground they become minelets pretty much similar to the cryo minelets or the electro minelets and if anything steps across them they blow up dealing damage the damage is scaled off of your uh, area damage and you do stack up damage pretty quick with this however this does feel a little bit awkward to use to start out with because you have to set these up ahead of time they don't last for very long they don't last like a proximity mine and um you don't really have any control over where the enemies are going. So if the enemies, for some reason, only a few of them run across your minefield, you're going to have to try to loop them back through the minefield or just uh, abandon the minefield and shoot directly. It, it can be a little bit frustrating. You also lose out on ammo with this one, I believe, too. So, oh, you also have the same problem with Plasma Burster as this one. If you're not hosting, sometimes your mines just don't exist uh, for whatever reason. So... I'm going to put this one into B tier right now. Uh, if all the bugs get fixed with it, and same with Plasma Burster, they'll probably be higher up, or at least they'll be at these spots all the time, no matter if you're hosting or if you're joining. But right now, with how they work, it's just kind of awkward. Then we've got Salvo. Salvo lets you use your uh, Hurricane like a shotgun. So you can charge up missiles up to nine of them. For each missile that you charge up, they move faster as well as they do more damage. You still have the guidance system, but you have to fire one rocket at a time. So this one I find really good. I really enjoy it. I'd put this one up into A tier. I, I think that it's a pretty good overclock overall. Then we have Jet Fuel Homebrew. This one increases your direct damage with the uh, Hurricane shots, but you lower your overall ammo, magazine size, and your explosion radius as well as your explosive damage. Uh, this one's really good. I really enjoy this one. You can shred through just about everything with it. It's very effective if you want to run a full damage build with it. Uh, this one's another like A tier perk, or another A tier overclock, sorry. Then we move on to the Revolver, where our first one is Chain Hit. Chain Hit has a 75% uh, chance of when you hit a enemy's weak spot that that round will bounce into another nearby enemy. I don't really take this one a whole lot with the revolver. I don't find it as useful as some of the other revolver overclocks. It's not bad. It's still a bonus, but I'm going to put this one into C tier. It's just kind of okay for me. And then we have volatile bullets. Volatile bullets lowers your damage by 10, but you get four times damage whenever you're shooting anything that's on fire. So you do a ton of damage to anything that's on fire, which is great if you're running the burning hell overclock. Uh, or if you're running uh, incinerary grenades, although you don't get a whole lot of them, or if you have somebody running a flamethrower on your team, this one is really good. It's more situational than some of the other overclocks, but which is also kind of why I'm going to put it into B tier. Uh, 
Sorry, I'm going to put these on the outside of it. Uh, that's why I'm going to put it into B tier, because even though it is really strong, um, if you don't set up for it, it's not as strong. And if you don't have a team around it, it's also not as strong as it could be. Uh, if you have all that going for it, then I could see it being argued for S tier, though, too, because this does an insane amount of damage to pretty much anything that you're shooting with it. At least that's on fire. Uh, then we've got Six Shooter. Six Shooter gives you more bullets, more bullets in the gun, faster rate of fire, but slower reload speed and more spread. The revolver already doesn't have too much spread on it, so this isn't that big a deal. And if you're spam firing, you're probably at close range. Having six bullets and having extra ammo is always nice with it. Um, I'd put this one into A tier. It feels like a nice quality of life upgrade for the, for the uh, revolver. Then we've got Homebrew Powder. This randomizes your revolver damage between 75% and 200%. So you can potentially do double damage uh, over what the base damage is for the revolver, which is pretty good. And even if you low roll, it's not that big a deal. If you go with one damage overclock, I think that you're still one-shotting grunts in the head or two-shotting them in the body. And you do still have a chance of just high rolling and one-shotting grunts in the body. It's also pretty good for just killing just about everything else, too. Um, if you high roll, you can one-shot guards and you can one-shot slashers. Uh, so uh, B tier. I like it. Again, I don't think it's as strong as something like Six Shooter is, which is just an all-around upgrade, in my opinion. This one is kind of a gamble, but it's a gamble that you'll most likely win the majority of the time, so uh, still good. Then we've got Elephant Rounds. This doubles your damage with a revolver, but it halves your total ammo, takes away one bolt in the gun, so you hold three rounds rather than four. You also have way less spread, so you're much more accurate with this, but you have a lot more recoil and a lot more... Uh, or a lot more time waiting for the spread to kind of come back in. So you get one real powerful shot, and this does turn your revolver into a sniper rifle. It's very strong. Uh, this one is highly specialized, but it's probably the gunner's single most damage per shot uh, weapon that they can have, besides potentially the volatile bullets. But as I said, that one you kind of have to build for, so that's why it's here, where I think I'm going to put revolver, or where I'm going to put elephant rounds into S tier. It's pretty crazy. Then we have another crazy overclock. This is Magic Bullets. This one gives you more ammo, uh, but lowers your damage. This one also makes it so anytime that you hit anywhere near an enemy within five meters, your bullet will ricochet into them. If there's multiple enemies, it will just pick one at random, but that's okay because you're going to be running this with explosive rounds and you're going to be running this with poison rounds in the revolver. So anytime that you hit, you're dealing AOE damage with your bullets, as well as there's a very high chance to spread poison to all enemies, slowing them down and dealing more damage. Aside from that, you'll probably just take all ammo and then faster reload speeds, and the game becomes incredibly easy. This is surprisingly strong. It's incredibly strong at wave clearing. It might be one of the strongest weapons that Gunner has just for wave clearing, at least in the amount of time that it takes. It's really, really good. It works so well with any sort of like single high damage uh, overclock. So Big Bertha, Lead Storm, Jet Fuel, anything like that. It works incredibly well with it. Even works incredibly well with like Neurotoxin Rounds uh, or uh, Burning Hell or anything like that where you're just dealing single target damage or just AOE damage. It was just, it's amazing. This one's S tier. It's also a super fun overclock to be running. Then we move on to the Burst Pistol, which our first one is Full Chamber Seal. This one increases our damage slightly and increases our rate of fire slightly, both of which are good for the Burst Pistol. This one's going to go into B tier because it's a nice overclock. And then we got Composite Casings, more ammo, and uh, I think Faster Bursts. Yeah, this one is more ammo, faster bursts. This one is faster reload times. Either way, that one's still pretty good. This one's also good. Uh, makes the burst pistol feel nice. B tier. Both these are th solid overclocks for them. Then we've got compact mags. This uh, lowers your burst rate of fire and lowers your reload speed. So it's a little bit slower, but you do get a lot more ammo for it. Another B tier overclock, I would say, for the burst pistol. Good all the way around. I enjoy it. Then we have uh, experimental rounds. This increases the base damage of the burst pistol, but lowers the ammo and the magazine. This does make it incredibly easy for you to hit breakpoints, though, for the burst pistol, where you can just one burst grunts. That's really useful, uh, and you still have plenty of ammo, both in the magazine and at, as extra, so I'd put this A tier. Then we have Electro Mindlets. This lowers your damage and lowers your magazine size. 
but now all of your rounds can stick in the ground, which if any enemy runs across them, it works the same way the cryo minelets do or the mine uh, layer mines do, where they'll explode, dealing damage to all enemies, this being electric damage and dealing damage over time. Very useful. Uh, this one's A tier as well. It's just handy to have. Then we've got lead spray. This increases your damage by a lot with the burst pistol, but you increase your spread by a lot with the burst pistol too. This one stacks up damage per second really fast, especially if you go all damage with it. It can shred through things like dreadnoughts very fast. You could also run it more with ammo and stuff. Still have it hit those breakpoints on grunts real easy. Uh, still like A tier all the way around. It's it's good too. And then we have micro flechettes, where you get a lot more ammo, uh, a lot more magazine, less spread and less recoil per burst, but you do a lot less damage. Pretty much your damage gets cut in half. That's not a huge deal though. Um, you can run this as a stunning build. You can run it to where it does more damage and then hit certain breakpoints on enemies. It's a little bit more awkward then, but uh, this one's still probably like B tier. I like it well enough, I'd say. All right, and that concludes our overclocks for the gunner. Now we're moving on to the driller. So first up, we're going to be talking about the flamethrower. And our first overclock here is lighter tank. So this one increases your maximum fuel. That's all it does. Nothing more, nothing less. Really good. I'd put it up into B tier. It's really handy to have with the flamethrower. You could argue it to be A tier though, because it is really nice. Um, then our other clean overclock is sticky additive. This increases our damage and increases our sticky flame duration slightly. Again, good for the flamethrower. No real downside here. Another B tier. It's nothing crazy, but it, it is a nice uh, bonus. Then we've got the compact feed valves. This increases our tank size um, and increases our overall ammo that we get. It also increases our reload speed slightly, so we don't have as fast a reload, but it's not that big a deal. Uh, it does shorten our reach by two meters. Again, not too bad for the flamethrower. All of that feels like a pretty fair trade-off for what you get. Uh, I think I'd put this one up into A tier because I do like running all uh, all ammo flamethrower. Our other uh, balanced overclock that we have is the fuel stream diffuser. This one uh, increases our effective reach by five meters with the flamethrower, but it lowers our fuel output. So we don't put out as much fuel as we normally would. So our damage per second is lowered from this, uh, at least directly. Our sticky flame duration really doesn't matter with this. It stays the same. But if you want to run full reach flamethrower, that's actually really fun to do. Uh, I'd put this one into B tier. It's still a good overclock. I still like using it a lot. I don't think it's, again, an insane overclock or anything like that. It's just a really fun and a pretty good overclock to run. Then we have face melter. This increases our flamethrower damage by a lot. It decreases our tank size a little bit. Uh, it increases our flow rate, so our flame comes out quicker than normal. Uh, but it lowers our reach by three meters. This one's really good. It's great at close range. You can melt through bugs super quick. Um, it, it works pretty well against everything. You just got to get used to the shorter reach, which isn't too hard to get used to. So A tier. And then we've got sticky fuel, which sticky fuel lowers our overall ammo, both in the tank and uh, our spare ammo. But our Sticky Flame does a little bit more damage, and it lasts for another 6 seconds. So our damage over time can stack up a lot. Uh, it's also great if you're running the slowdown with the flames on this, uh, although it's not necessary either to be running that with Sticky Fuel. You could run all ammo, and that's really strong. Uh, sticky Flames I'd put up into A tier too. It's all around really solid overclock. Then moving on to the Cryo Cannon, we have our first overclock, which is Improved Thermal Efficiency. This one increases your overall ammo slightly and increases the uh, pressure drop rate. But uh, it makes the pressure drop rate better. So your pressure isn't dropping as fast and uh, you you get a larger tank. All around really good and uh, a solid overclock for the cryo cannon. Uh, I'd probably put this one up into A tier. It feels nice to have with it. Then we've got Ice Spear. Ice Spear makes it so you have one additional second on the repressure delay when you do uh, have to wait for your gun to regain pressure, but you now have the ice spear. So when you hit your reload button, this consumes 60 ammo, I believe, or sorry, 50 ammo, and then throws out an ice spear that can do 350 damage as well as 150 area damage to all enemies close to it. This one's really good because it's essentially the same as the base uh, cryo cannon, which is already pretty strong. 
but you do have that added advantage to firing the Ice Spear out to deal really high single target damage if you want to. If you don't, then you really don't have much of a downside to it unless you over uh, overheat your gun. So A tier as well. And then we've got Tune Cooler. Tune Cooler increases your uh, charge up time slightly. It also lowers your pressure gain rate, which is not as good, but it increases your flow rate by 10%. Uh, this one is pretty good. It's the best one for freezing crowds of enemies. You freeze enemies the quickest with this, um, which is usually what you want to be doing, especially in a group with the, um, with the cryo gun. All around really good. Uh, this one's probably S tier as well. It, it's very strong in my opinion. And then our last uh, balanced overclock we have is the flow expansion rate. This one is a bit weird for me because this one increases both the pressure gain and the pressure drop rates. So you can freeze things potentially faster, but you can potentially overheat the gun quicker. Uh, this does increase your flow rate though too. So you spew out ice a little bit faster. This one I've never been a huge fan of for the uh, cryo cannon. It's not bad. You do freeze things quicker, which is kind of nice, but it, it feels kind of just an odd way to use the cryo cannon, in my opinion. Uh, I'm going to put this one into C tier. It's similar to like bullet hell for me, um, where it can be really good in certain situations and some people really like it and I understand why, but for me, it's, it's a little bit uh, awkward. So maybe I'll have to use it more and kind of get more accustomed to it. Then we have Snowball, which Snowball takes away your maximum ammo with the Cryogannon, which kind of sucks. And you also get that one second more of repressure delay. Not a huge deal there. But this lets you uh, shoot the gun the same way that you would with the Ice Spear. When you push reload, this consumes 35 of your ammo, which shoots out a Ice Ball that will hit and freeze most enemies instantly. Uh, this is great on Mactera Plagues. It's really strong then. Uh, I think I put this into C tier last time I was talking about it, which compared to the other ones that we have there now, I don't know if I would. I think this one does have a bit more use. It can be good for crowds. Uh, well, it's mostly used for crowds. Against single targets, it's not that great. Um, the ammo, I still don't like that it takes away your ammo as much though. Um, I don't know. I think I'd put this one into B tier now. I, I think it's good. Uh, I like it overall. It's a, it's a lot of fun to use, really. Uh, and like I said, it's really good on Mactera Plagues. Uh, against regular grunts, it's also pretty good, at least in crowds. Uh, against single targets, just spray them down normally. Uh, and then we have Ice Storm, which Ice Storm increases your damage. It actually doubles your damage. And it doubles your damage, again, against frozen enemies. So you're dealing the most amount of single target damage that you can with uh, Ice Storm, at least with the Cryo Gun. Uh, this does lower your freeze power though, so you freeze things slower. It also increases your pressure drop rate, uh, and you lose out on ammo. Those can be bad things, but this does do the most amount of single target damage, and it's excellent for killing large enemies like Praetorians, uh, Oppressors, or uh, Dreadnoughts. It's also pretty good at killing Grunts and stuff. Um, it's not, I don't find it as useful in a team uh, unless everybody's going frozen things, but if everybody's got all sorts of elements, I don't find it as useful in a team as it is potentially in solo or in certain mission types, uh, at least for like dreadnoughts and stuff like that, at least big single targets. Still real solid overclock, real high damage, probably A tier. Uh, I could see it being argued for S tier though too. Then we have our corrosive sludge bump which our first overclock for the corrosive sludge pump is our AG mixture. This makes it so your projectiles are not affected by gravity as much, so you don't need to lob your shots as much. You can shoot them more straight. And when your blobs do hit the wall or whatever they hit, they'll drip down a little bit slower. And this one I'm going to put into C tier. This one feels okay. Um, it's, it's not really bad. It feels kind of nice to have. Uh, but if you've been using the sludge pump quite a bit, you get used to all the other overclocks. This one does feel a little bit weird because you'll likely be lobbing shots over enemies because you don't need to shoot as high as you normally would. So it kind of messes with that. And the bonus isn't like a huge amount. If you're having trouble aiming the sludge pump though, then this one might be the best one for you because it will make it a little bit easier. And then we've got the hydrogen ion additive. This one increases your corrosive damage over time. Although people have said that this increases the initial damage, which I don't know. Uh, it's supposed to affect the puddle damage though, I think. Uh, anyway, this also increases the slow of the puddles slightly. 
this one's pretty good. I like this one. Um, it feels nice to have with the corrosive sludge pump. I don't think it's one of the craziest ones though that they have. And I'd probably put it into B tier. I think it's just okay. Then we have the dispenser compound, which I kept calling dispenser compound. And I don't know why. Uh, I guess it just made sense to me at the time. But this is the disperser compound, which lowers your charge shot damage, but increases the amount of puddles that you get and increases the amount of uh, fragments that you have when you fire this as a charge shot. This one is really good for the corrosive sludge pump. It lets you cover the largest amount of area uh, with any of your overclocks. So it's pretty solid in that regard. Uh, this one is probably one of the best ones for it. And I'd put it up into A tier because of that. Then we have the volatile impact mixture. This one is also really good for the uh, corrosive sludge pump. This one increases your splash damage as well as your single target damage, at least when you shoot one out. It lowers your puddle duration though, and it lowers the damage over time duration. So you're not doing as much damage over time, um, at least from the puddles, and the puddles aren't lasting as long, but you're doing more damage with the sludge pump itself. This one I found was really good because you can build it to where you can one-shot grunts just regularly, which makes it extremely ammo efficient. And if you use the charge shots for crowds, you can kill them very quickly. Uh, you can kill, I think, the slashers in just two shots. Pretty sure you can. And you can shoot, I think you can even kill the uh, guards in two shots um, with this as well. Very useful. Um, this one is also probably one of the best ones for the corrosive sludge pump. I'm not sure if it's better than dispenser compound. I think dispenser is probably the best one for it, just because it aids in what the sludge pump does so well, but this one's a, a really good option too. And then our first unstable overclock is the Goo Bomber Special. This one is a super fun overclock. It lets you shoot pretty much like a Goo Bomber. Now your goo no longer um, hits into walls and explodes, but it does spread more droplets out as it goes. Uh, these droplets also last longer than normal, and they have more fragments, as well as the fragments do more damage. Uh, this can be really good even on single targets because you can fire it up and then it will drip down on top of something. Uh, that used to be not a thing that you could do. It was a thing when the gun first came out, then people were kind of abusing it, so they nerfed it and then they brought it back and it's not as strong as it used to be. Um, but it's still pretty solid. It's good against groups. It's good for holding areas. Uh, this one's probably another A tier overclock, I'd say. I think it's pretty good. And then our last uh, goo gun overclock is the sludge blast. This turns your corrosive sludge pump into an acid shotgun. This makes it so you have less ammo in your magazine, you have less ammo overall, uh, your reload time is longer, you have less charge shot damage, uh, at least splash damage, but your oh, and your charge time is longer. Uh, but you do have faster moving projectiles, and they do move like a shotgun. This one's pretty bad. This one is honestly just, it's too weak at the moment. It takes away too much from the gun. If this had more damage per shot, uh, or more charge shot damage, or something else, it, it could be usable. It's a really fun overclock to use, but currently it's just, it's probably one of the weaker overclocks, and it actually nerfs the sludge pump when you put it on, because you're losing out on a lot of damage and a lot of damage per second. So this one's D tier. Uh, hopefully that one gets changed in the future because it's just not a great place right now. Then moving on to the Sabata Driller's first secondary. First up, we have Chain Hit. This one works the same way as the Revolver's Chain Hit. The Revolver, I would say, is better than the Chain Hit from this. Uh, you'll, you'll get more Chain Hits out of this, but the Chain Hit still isn't anything way great, and I usually don't run it all that often. Uh, it is more damage and it is a bonus, but I'm going to put this one into C tier. Same with the other chain hit. It's just, it's kind of okay. Then we've got homebrew powder. Homebrew powder for the Sabata randomizes your damage between 80% and 140%. The Sabata already doesn't have high damage. Even if you're running full damage with the Sabata, this doesn't make up that much more damage. And I would like to see this one get buffed the same way the revolver one did. Right now, I also don't see myself taking this one a whole lot. It is potentially a buff to the Sabata, so I would put it up into C tier. Then we have the oversized magazine for the Sabata, which increases our magazine by 10, but it increases our reload speed. This one's an extremely basic one for the Sabata, but it's probably one of the best ones for the Sabata. You get a lot more ammo, you can run it uh, with even more ammo or with faster reloads and kind of make up for that reduced reload time. And this does probably make it the best option for longer range shots. Uh, I'd put this one into A tier, even though it's not really as strong as some of these other overclocks that we've talked about so far. It is good for the Sabata. 
and it probably feels the best for it, but it's still on like the low end of A tier. It's not anything crazy. Up next, we have the explosive reload. This lowers your overall uh, magazine size by a lot. It cuts it in half. It also lowers your uh, total ammo by half. But now every time that you go to reload your gun after you've shot it out, any one of the any of the bullets that you've hit an enemy puts an explosive detonator in them. And this sets it off doing even more damage, very similar to the embedded detonators that scouts submachine guns have. This one can be really good, but you don't I don't think it's as strong as the Zukov's uh, embedded detonators, really. I think this one's B tier. It's on the very high end of B tier, but I am still going to put it into B tier because um, it just it feels OK. It feels really good when you're shooting big stuff, but uh, I don't know. You know what? I'm going to actually put Explosive Reload into A tier. I think it's good enough to be in A tier. I use it fairly often and I like it. It works pretty well with most of your primary weapons so long as you're going with AOE damage for the driller, which you usually are. So I, I think it I think it can go into A tier. Then we have Tranquilizer. Uh, tranquilizer lowers your uh, magazine size and it lowers your rate of fire. Not as much as it used to. That was buffed. And this makes it so every bullet has a 50% chance to stun enemies. This can be pretty good, especially for the team. Um, in solo, this one's not that great, I would say, mostly because it doesn't really matter if things are stunned with the driller, especially if you're running like the cryo cannon. Um, you can still freeze things fairly easy, whether they're stunned or not. But uh, in multiplayer, it does help quite a bit. Um, I think I'd put tranquilizer into B tier. I think it's OK. And then we've got automatic fire. This increases your rate of fire. It increases your spread as well. But your gun turns from semi-auto into full auto. That's really good. I like it with the uh, Sabata. I think I'd still put it B tier. I don't think it's insane again. It's just, it's kind of nice to have the revolver that's full auto. You definitely want to, or revolver that's full auto, the pistol that's full auto, but you definitely still want to have the larger magazine because running through uh, 12 rounds with it is yeah, pretty easy to do when you're just spraying it. It's a little bit better when you have like 17 rounds in it. I also don't think it turns the Sabata into anything crazy. It's just kind of cool to have a little submachine gun as your secondary. And then moving on to the EPC, our first overclock is energy rerouting. This one gives you more ammo and faster charge speeds, both of which are good and they help out the EPC a lot. Uh, B tier, I could see it being argued for A tier though, just like a lot of these clean overclocks. They're just nice to have most of the time. Then we have magnetic cooling. This uh, increases your cooling rate and increases or decreases the shot from charged up shots. This one uh, is probably the least ammo efficient if you want to be mining with it. Uh, it's also not as useful when using thin containment field overall. So I would put this one into C tier. It is the least punishing out of them if you don't, if you do mess up quite a bit though, or potentially one of the uh, ones that doesn't punish you as much. But if you want a better, there's still two better overclocks. There's still persistent plasma and heat pipe that are better if you want to do charge shots and you want to be mining uh, with thin containment filled. And there's still overcharger, which is better, and energy rerouting, which is better if you just want this for damage. So this one is just kind of the odd one out. That's why it goes down to C tier. It's still useful, but not as useful as the other ones are. Then we've got heavy hitter. This one increases our basic shot damage but increases the heat generation from those basic shots and we reduce ammo. This one's best if you want to spam fire it at enemies. Uh, the EPC is already not that great at spam firing at enemies though. Uh, it's better to have charge shots and it's better to be mining. If you want to have more of a damaging weapon or at least a damaging secondary towards enemies at longer ranges, the spot is usually a better option. And then going with something like tranquilizer, or oversized magazines, or explosive rounds is probably better too, or even the automatic fire. So I think I'd put heavy hitter. Uh, I think I'd put heavy hitter into C tier as well. Um, you can build fire damage on it, and that does make it better, but uh, it's still kind of awkward compared to some of the other overclocks. Like I think energy rerouting is even better for this if you just want to use it for spam firing too, because then at least you get more ammo and a faster cooling rate. The damage increase isn't massive from this. Uh, then we have Heat Pipe, which Heat Pipe used to be probably the strongest overclock for Driller and maybe one of the strongest overclocks in the game for quite a while. It was nerfed though, and it's not as strong as it used to be, as well as the uh, mining with it got kind of nerfed, but not 
really it's still pretty viable. This one makes it so your charge shots take less ammo, which is good. Your charge speed is also quicker, which is also good. Uh, but your heat buildup when charging is much more. It's not as forgiving as it once was. This is still good for thin containment filled. It's still the most efficient, uh, at least shot for shot, for mining. But it doesn't make a great weapon. So this one I would put into B tier for the utility of it. But if you want a better uh, overclock for still mining with and dealing damage, then Persistent Plasma is much better than this one. And we'll talk about that now. Persistent Plasma lowers your charge shot damage and lowers your charge shot air area damage. But you get Persistent Plasma. So when you have a charge shot hit somewhere, it creates a plasma fire around it that deals a lot of fire damage to all enemies that stand within it. It deals a really high amount of fire damage and it slows all enemies that walk through it. This is great for horde clear, it's great for single target damage, it's great for mining, and it's great for uh, using thin containment field for both the mining and the single target damage. Uh, this one is probably the best overclock for the EPC right now and really sets it above. I would put this one up into S tier. This one is real strong. And then we have Overcharger, which Overcharger makes it so your charge shots take more ammo than they normally would. Your charge radius is a bit bigger, your charge damage and your charge area damage is quite a bit more, uh, but your cooling rate is lower. This is great if you want to have just the most damage that you can on the EPC with the charge shots. It does uh, reasonably well against crowds, it does pretty well against single targets. It's all around pretty good. I would put it up into A tier. It's not as strong as Persistent Plasma in a lot of instances, mostly because you can't pair it very well with Thin Containment Filled. You're probably going to put uh, Flying Nightmare on it or potentially the Fire Buildup on it. Otherwise, like Thin Containment Filled is just not ammo efficient enough for it. Uh, heat Pipe and the Persistent Plasma would be better options in that regard. All right, up next we have Engineer's Weapons. And first up, we're going to be talking about the Warthog Auto Shotgun. So our first overclock is Stunner, which Stunner increases our damage towards stunned enemies by 33%, uh, or it's 30%, I don't remember which. Uh, it also increases our chance of stunning enemies, uh, which is good. This is nothing but a bonus, but it's not as strong as some of the other overclocks are for the uh, auto shotgun. So I think I'd put this one into B tier. I think it's fine. Um, I also don't think it makes the auto shotgun anything crazy. Then we have Lightweight Magazine. Lightweight Magazine increases our overall ammo and decreases our reload speed. Two things that the auto shotgun really needs. Um, this one's definitely A tier. It's all around a really solid overclock for the auto shotgun. Then we have Magnetic Pelt Alignment. This makes it so our rate of fire is slower, but we get increased weak spot damage and our spread is cut in half. So our shotgun is far more accurate. This one's probably my favorite overclock for the auto shotgun and I put it up into A tier. It still doesn't make the auto shotgun anything insane, but it is a nice upgrade to have for it. Then we've got Cycle Overload. Cycle Overload increases our damage by one, it increases our rate of fire by double, uh, but it increases our spread by about 50%, and it increases our uh, reload speed by another half second. Kind of annoying with the reload speed, kind of annoying with the spread, but this doesn't mess with your damage points. It's actually easier to body shot grunts after two shots, I believe. Uh, or headshot grunts, although, yeah, yeah, you're probably going to be shooting them at close range. Uh, I did say this one was C tier when I first made the list, and I, I don't think it is anymore, really, compared to what we have in C tier, and even in the B tier. I think I kind of undersold this one a bit. It's also pretty fun. I would put this one into, like, A tier. I don't think it's as good, in my opinion, as the Magnetic Pelt Alignment or the Lightweight Magazine, but it is better than Stunner. Um, and it's better than most of these in here. Maybe not for every situation, but most of them, I think. Then we have mini shells, which mini shells decreases our damage. Um, it also makes it so we have no stun on the shotgun anymore, but we get more ammo and a larger magazine as well as half the recoil. Mini shells is pretty fun to use. Uh, it does make the shotgun a little bit awkward, but I think you still can build it to where you can two shot body shot grunts, I think and you can still one-shot headshot them if you want to build it that way too. So mini shells, I think I'd also put into B tier. Um, I, I don't think it's quite as good as these other ones in A tier. I think it's kind of similar to a lot of these in B tier where it's, it's nice to have, but not as strong as some overclocks do get. Then we've got Stubby's overclocks, and our first one is Super Slim Rounds. 
This one increases our magazine by five and cuts down on our recoil by 20%. Nice, really good to have on stubby. B tier, nothing really to complain about there. Then we've got well-oiled machine, uh, faster rate of fire, faster reload time. Again, nothing to complain about there. Good B tier. You could argue either of these for A tier as well because they are just bonuses to stubby and they're bonuses that stubby can take advantage of, especially the rate of fire one. That one does feel really nice to have. EM refire booster. This one increases your rate of fire by a lot. Uh, it increases your spread by a bit, but it also increases you having electric damage on stubby. So your damage goes up and your damage per second goes way up. The spread isn't too bad. It's still fairly easy to control stubby, and this is probably one of stubby's best overclocks. I'd put this one up into A tier. I really enjoy this one. Then we have the lightweight rounds. This one lowers stubby's damage and rate of fire by a bit, but you get a lot of extra ammo. This one's probably one of the most ammo efficient uh, things that Engineer has. So if you want to actually have ammo, this one's a good choice. And it does help quite a bit with that. I think I'd put this one up into A tier. It's on the lower end of A tier. I don't think it's as good as the EM refire booster. But uh, if you want to run like a real high damage secondary, which I mean, all of your secondaries are, uh, at least currently. Then we've got the turret arc which I think I said this one was C tier before. And once again, I don't know if it's C tier compared to the ones that we have in here. Um, this one lets you slow down enemies and do electric damage whenever you shoot your turrets. You lose out on ammo, you lose out on rate of fire. This is arguably as well as, well, kind of the, the lightweight rounds, this one and the turret EM discharge are all potentially the most ammo efficient that Engineer has provided you're willing to play in a certain play style because you can just set up your turrets. You don't even need to build them up, which uh, I actually wasn't aware of until recently. Um, you can just set them down as they are and then shoot them and it deals damage to enemies around you. It slows enemies around you. It is really nice for that and it is really nice for the team, especially when things aren't focusing you. Obviously, this is better if you do have your turrets set up and you're having enemies run through because at least then your turrets are shooting stuff. But this is still potentially the most ammo efficient of the engineer primaries, which can be a pretty big deal to some people. I don't particularly like playing that way, but I do see the value in it now. So I think I'd put turret arc into B tier. I don't think I'm going to put it any higher than that for me personally. If you really enjoy it, then by all means say it's A or S tier because yeah, it, it's really ammo efficient. Um, and if you're just going for that, then cool. Uh, but for me, it's a little bit too much micromanaging. With the uh, turret EM discharge, which is our next one, this does a similar thing when you shoot one of your turrets. Uh, this does electric damage and damage over time to all enemies around it. Uh, damaging them, you lose out on your overall uh, direct damage and magazine size by a little bit. I, I still like this one more than I like the turret arc, but it still feels kind of awkward to me. I don't think I like using these as much as the balanced overclocks. I'd also put this one into B tier. Again, I could see people putting it higher, though, because it does make it so your turret slash uh, SMG is more ammo efficient. It's the same thing with going with, like, turret whip with a shotgun. Anyway, moving on to the Loki smart rifle, or the Lock 1 smart rifle, whichever you'd like to call it. I like calling it the Loki, so I will continue doing that. Our first one is the armor breaking module, which armor breaking module makes it so when you're fully locked on, all of your bullets... Uh, ignore armor pretty much. They or they break armor completely. They have the maximum amount of armor breaking that a gun can have. This is pretty nice. Uh, it helps a lot with the Loki. Uh, I like it. I think I'd put this one into B tier. Then we have Eraser, which Eraser gives you more ammo and allows you to lock onto more targets. Again, good. I like it. Uh, put that in there. It gives you more ammo in the magazine, I should say. Not more extra ammo. You just get 12 more shots. So it's not as impactful as like more extra ammo, but it is still useful and you can build this however you'd like. Then we have Seeker Rounds. Seeker Rounds uh, increases your reload speed slightly. It also uh, increases your lock-on threshold so you can lock on to more enemies. This also makes it so your bullets will always hit the targets uh, that you're locked onto, regardless of if there's anything in the way, whether that be ground or other enemies. As some people have told me, and I'm not sure if this is true or not, but your bullets teleport to the enemies, so blow-through rounds might not work on this. I'm not sure. If they do, then it's good for crowds. If they don't, it's not as good for crowds. It's really good against dreadnoughts. Um, seeker rounds completely shred dreadnoughts because you can just lock onto them and fire at them just head on from the face. 
you don't have to worry about any of that unless it's like the hive guard or something then you'll just have to do the semi-auto fire for his fleshy bids uh but for any of the other dreadnoughts just lock onto it and keep locking on and keep firing your uh, rate of fire when you're locked on is also about halved with this so your bullets don't go out as quick as they would otherwise Still, probably an A-tier perk, uh, or A-tier overclock, it's it's really nice to have. Then we've got explosive chemical rounds, which last time I was talking about this in the tier list, I made the mistake of saying that this was just kind of an okay overclock, uh, and then people told me that it was an amazing overclock, and I'm on that side now. This one is probably now my favorite overclock for the smart rifle. Uh, the way I was using it before just wasn't the most effective way. This lowers your damage per shot. Uh, and it lowers your overall ammo, but every third shot always explodes on the enemy. This also counts for every third lock. So even if an enemy like a crawler or, I mean, a, a swarmer only has, you know, a, if you just put one lock on a swarmer, you'll kill it. But if you put three locks on it, you'll still kill it with that one shot. But that third shot, or at least that third lock will count as an explosion. So it'll deal damage to everything around it. If you pair this with your Every third shot makes an electric round on an enemy and you're dealing more damage towards electri electrified and burning enemies. You stack up damage incredibly fast with this. And pretty much the way you want to use this is just try to lock onto one thing with all three locks as fast as you can, then let it go and just keep doing that. Uh, it's okay if you lock on with like four or five or something like that, but that's the way you want to use it. And it makes it good for crowd clear. It makes it incredibly good for single target damage. This one is really strong, especially if you pair it with some of the other secondaries, like a fire grenade launcher or a fire or electric uh, breach cutter. Really, really strong. I think this one I'm actually going to put into S tier now. It's it's good. I think it's as it, it's good enough to be up there. The way I was using it before, I was trying to use it for just crowd control and just locking onto a bunch of enemies, and it wasn't working all that well. And I kind of see why now, because that's not the way this is intended to be used. You want to just lock onto a single target, blast it over and over again, or one single target, one single target, one single target, and do a lot of these explosive damage. Um, this also makes it so you can just use a three burst to kill Trijaws too, which is really handy. Uh, then we have Neuro Lasso, which Neuro Lasso makes it so your lock on is a little bit slower, but when you are locked on, oh, you, when you're also locked on, you don't have as much time to lock on. Uh, so you can't stay locked onto a, the same target as much. But for every lock that you have on an enemy, you slow the enemy down by 10%. This only lasts for a very short amount of time, though. This one is pretty useful, especially in, like, Dreadnought missions, because it does slow them down. Um, it's pretty useful in most missions, I've found. It's not as good as I originally thought it was, because I thought the slow lasted a lot longer. Uh, this one, I would say, is B tier. But I could see people arguing it for A tier. And then our last overclock is Executioner. This one makes it so when we're fully locked on, we do 50% more damage to weak spots. We lose out on slightly more ammo in our magazine and more ammo overall. But our lock on time is much faster and we don't have to lock onto as many targets. Both of those are pros. This one is just all around really good. Uh, this one I'd put into A tier. You could argue it for S tier, I think. <laughs> It's, it's really good in pretty much every situation. The loss in ammo and in magazine size is not that big of a deal, and the increase in damage is really nice, as well as the faster lock-ons. All right, now we're moving on to the grenade launcher, which our first grenade launcher upgrade is Packrat, which gives us two more ammo. That's all it does. Really nice to have on the grenade launcher, though. Uh, a or B tier. I'm going to put it into B tier, but I could see it being argued for A tier. It's solid. You, just, you don't lose anything on it. It's just nice to have. Um, it's similar to like the lightweight tanks with the uh, flamethrower. No downside, just an upside. Then we've got clean sweep, which is more area damage, more area effect radius. Again, very useful. Nice to have. I'd put it into B tier. Uh, I don't think it's super crazy, but it is nice to have. Uh, then we have the compact rounds. This gives us more ammo, but we lose out on damage and we lose out on effect radius not as much not a huge amount like half a meter we don't lose on a damage all that much only by 10 uh, having that extra ammo is really nice for the grenade launcher though i really enjoy this one um i don't know this is either a or b tier i get see people swapping this with pack rat because pack rat is just a bonus this comes with a little bit of a downside uh but just solid too and then we've got the rj250 compound this lowers our damage by quite a bit 
uh, it increases our max ammo by a lot. It also lowers our reload speed, which is nice, so we can reload a bit quicker. And it lets you fling yourself across the map. So it's one of the funnest overclocks for the engineer. It also gives the engineer the most amount of utility, or I guess mobility, out of any of their overclocks. Because none of the others do for primary or secondary. You can build this for crowd damage. It works pretty well. You can build this um, just for a lot of ammo and fling yourself around. That's usually what I do. Super fun overclock. I'm going to put this into A tier, mostly for how fun it is. It's good, but it's also incredibly fun. So uh, I think A tier is fair. I don't think it's as crazy as special powder is for scout, but we'll get to that in a little while. <laughs> then for our unstable overclocks, we have hyper propellant. This one turns our grenade launcher into a railgun. Uh, we lose out on ammo. We lose out on effect radius by a lot, but we get insane amount of velocity on our shot. So our projectile really doesn't drop at all and we get tons of direct impact damage. This is probably the highest single target damage out of any weapon in the game, I think. Uh, it's it's really insane, especially on like elimination missions. If you can see something, you can probably kill it with this. Uh, this one's like S tier. This one's one of my favorites and it's really strong. And then we have Fat Boy, which is kind of the other way around from Hyper Propellant, but also insane. This one jacks up your area damage by a ton. You lose out on ammo by a lot. You don't get very many shots with this. Your area effect radius is bigger and your projectile velocity is slower. But this creates a nuclear cloud wherever you shoot. It's like firing a mini nuke. Uh, you shoot it out, it blows up the area. You can mine with this, uh, which I have seen people do, but it's not the most efficient. It's not as efficient as like the uh, EPC mining or as C4 mining. But you can do it if you need to. It also destroys crowds. Uh, and it can do really high single target damage too. It's very specialized. So you probably want a primary with a lot of ammo. But when you do use it against crowds, you definitely destroy crowds. Uh, just one fat boy can completely destroy a uh, swarm that comes in at you. So this one's probably S tier as well, just because of how crazy it is. Um, and then we're moving on to the breach cutter. And our first overclock is also crazy. This one is lightweight cases. This gives you more max ammo and a faster reload time, which doesn't really sound all that crazy because we've talked about other overclocks that do essentially the same thing. But we're talking about the breach cutter here, which already has really high damage and really high damage per second. Also, they fixed the breach cutter, so it actually breaks armor now. So that makes this even better since the gun's not bugged anymore. It, even when it was bugged, it was still stupidly strong. Uh, so th yeah, this one's S tier. Uh, it's just, it's just making an already way strong weapon even stronger. So that's why I put it here. Then we have roll control. This one's a super fun overclock to use. This one, you, when you fire the breach cutter, you can hold down the trigger and you can control how the breach cutter moves. So you can control the line. Uh, you can't quite spin it 360. I think it stops at like 300 degrees or something like that. You pretty much get a full rotation in though. This can be really good on like escort missions. If you're running plasma trail, it can be really good. It's a super fun overclock. There's no real downside to it. And uh, I'd put this one up into A tier. I like it a lot. Then we've got the strong plasma current. This one is kind of the least <laughs> impressive. This, well, this is potentially one of the least impressive ones for the breach cutter because it just makes the breach cutter stronger, which the breach cutter is already stupidly strong. So... Making it a little bit stronger isn't as impressive. It's still nice to have, but it's not as impressive as some of the other overclocks. Uh, you get more damage with this, and you get a longer-lasting projectile. Great for the breach cutter. I'm going to put this one into B tier, even though I could see people easily arguing this into A tier, because it does make the breach cutter, which is already stupidly strong, even stupidly stronger. Which is, you know, fair enough, fair point. Then we have high voltage crossover. This lowers your magazine by one, but you get the high voltage crossover, which makes it so you're doing electric damage. Um, so you're zapping enemies over time. Good to have. You're doing damage over time. It does slow down enemies. So if you're not killing them, you are slowing them down afterwards. Breach Cutter is already great at killing hordes and great at killing big things. If you want to slow down big things that you don't kill, awesome. Uh, I'd probably put this one into A tier. Even though it does mess with your magazine, it's not that big a deal. Just take the bigger magazine in tier one. You'll do fine. Return to sender lowers your ammo count uh, by quite a bit. You lose out on six ammo. But you get the re return to sender effect where you can then fire your shot out. 
and then recall it back to you. It does have a certain distance though where you can recall it back to you. This does stack up your damage per second really fast at any sort of large enemy or even in crowds. It's honestly not as great against crowds because usually you've killed all the crowd as it goes through and recalling it back to you, you know, it's mostly good for big things like Praetorians, Dreadnoughts. I think it's strong. I, I like it. Uh, it's fun to use. I'd probably put this into A tier. Um, I wish it didn't take as much ammo though. Then we've got Spinning Death, which Spinning Death is an interesting one. This lowers your damage, lowers your ammo, lowers your magazine size, but you get a longer lasting projectile uh, with a wider beam width. And when you fire it out, it just starts spinning around in place. If you combine this with either triple line split for just a huge amount of crowd control, because you can just destroy Macteras and uh, other hordes, or if you combine it with Plasma Trail, you just deal tons of damage per second for anything that's stuck in it, and you definitely want to be running stun with this, because it's just stupidly strong with it. You, you deal a lot of damage, and it's a really strong crowd control option. I'd put Spinning Death also up into A tier. Then we've got Inferno, which Inferno is probably one of my favorite overclocks for this weapon. <laughs> This one lowers your damage, it lowers your armor breaking, but your shots now ignite everything that they hit pretty much. It's very unlikely that anything's not going to be ignited once you shoot this at it. The reason why this is my favorite is because it's a fun overclock, it's great for killing crowds. Uh, previously it wasn't as strong simply because Stubby and the Warthog didn't work as well with it. The new Loki rifle though on the other hand works incredibly well with the Inferno. As well as even though it doesn't break armor it still kills big things very fast. It's not bad at killing big things at all. It's great against hordes though. It's really really strong against hordes. I'd put Inferno into B tier. Um, it is potentially the worst of the of the best weapons overclocks, um, as I've seen some people say, where the uh, Breach Cutter is already insane. Lowering its damage or making it more specialized for crowds doesn't necessarily make it a bad thing, which I think is completely true, but it does make it more specialized, which is why I'm going to put it into B tier because of that reason. And finally, we have Scouts Overclocks. The list is getting kind of big. I can't show everything on here. Uh, first up, we're going to be talking about the uh, Deep Core GK2. And our first overclock is compact ammo. This increases our mag size by 5 and reduces our recoil by 30%. Nice things to have on the, uh, the GK2. Nothing too crazy. I would say it's B tier. Then we have homebrew powder. Homebrew powder is the same as it is on the Sabata. So you're potentially getting higher damage but potentially low rolling damage. I don't find it that great on the GK2. Uh, you can build all damage for it and then it works better to where you can... Uh, no longer be missing breakpoints on things like swarmers, which is important because otherwise it's kind of annoying to shoot a swarmer twice. Um, and you can kill things like slashers a little bit quicker, grunts a little bit quicker, stuff like that. It's not necessarily a bad one, but it's not one that I really enjoy. I could see people arguing it for B tier, but I'm going to put it into C. Uh, whoops, let me put that there. Uh, then we have gas rerouting. Gas rerouting increases our rate of fire and increases our reload speed. Two things that the GK2 can make real good use of. Another B tier perk, or another B tier overclock, good. I like it. Then we've got Bullets of Mercy. Bullets of Mercy lowers our magazine by five. Not a huge deal. Uh, but we do get 33% bonus damage towards any enemies affected by any status effect. Very strong with the GK2. Very strong. Probably the GK2's strongest overclock overall. Um... I could see people arguing this S tier, but I'm still going to put it A tier. I think it's solid. The 33% I think affects the GK2 not as much as I would like. Um, it's mostly because you can't build tons of damage on the GK2. And 33% of your max, which I think is 18, is not massive, but it does uh, actually hit some pretty good break points, especially for weak spots. Because I think with this, it makes it so you can two-shot, headshot things like slashers, assuming they're affected by a status effect. Um, and they'll probably be taking damage from that, so it's pretty consistent in doing that, which is uh, really nice to have. And then we've got the overclocked firing mechanism. This one increases our rate of fire by a lot, but it doubles our recoil. The recoil is pretty manageable with the GK2. The increased rate of fire is nice. I would put this one up into A tier. Uh, I find it to be a pretty solid overclock. It's not it's nowhere near as solid as Bolts of Mercy, where Bolts of Mercy is on like the very high end of A tier. This is just kind of, it's it's good. And then we've got AI Stability Engine. 
This one decreases our damage, decreases our rate of fire, but makes it so we have no recoil. We get 40% bonus damage to weak spots. Um, and our recovery, our spread recovery is pretty much instantaneous. So our bullets are landing exactly where we want them to go. This one is really cool. I really like it. I'd put this one into A tier as well. Uh, solid for the GK2. I love being able to pick things off from so far away with it. Next up, we got Electrifying Reload. This works similar to the uh, Electro Minelets that the Burst Pistol had that we talked about where we lower our damage, we lower our magazine size, but when we fire at an enemy and we hit it and we go to reload, we start zapping the enemy and we deal damage to them. This can be useful. Um, I, I'm i okay with building the GK2 to do enough damage to still hit breakpoints and stuff. I still like that about it, and the reload isn't too big a deal when you're doing this. It's also good if you want to combine it with the Zukovs to do more damage, especially if you're going with like gas recycling and then more damage towards enemies affected by either IFG or electric. You can stack up damage really quick with this. Uh, I'd put this one into B tier. It's still not one of my favorites for the GK2, but I think it is a little bit better than I gave it credit for, because it, it still has a decent use for it. Wow, all Bs are A... Oh, wait, no, we had one C tier. I was going to say all Bs are A tiers for the GK. Uh, again, I could see Bolts of Mercy going up into S tier with some people. Um... Completely understandable, and same with I could see homebrew powder moving up if you like to play that. Uh, then we move on to the M1000, where we have minimal clips. This gives us more ammo and a faster reload. Really good with this. Really solid for the M1000 uh, A tier. You could argue it's S tier though too, because it it is really nice to have nine charge shots that one shot body shot grunts uh, and clear through crowds really fast. Then we've got hover clock, which hover clock. Makes it so when you focus in midair, it kind of resets your follow or you sort of hover there. Gravity doesn't affect you as much, I guess would be a better way of putting this. You can use this for stopping falls. Uh, it's not as consistent if you're not hosting than if you are hosting the lobby, but uh, it still can be really useful. Um, hover clock I'm going to put into B tier. I, I think it's good. I, I like it a lot, especially if you combine it with special powder, then it's a super fun build to use. I don't know. You could argue it's S tier too, because it's just, it gives you extra utility and it doesn't take away from the gun. I, I feel like I'm just going to put it B tier though, because that seems okay. It's one of those weird overclocks that it's kind of hard to quantify as to how good it is. Then we have Hipster, which Hipster is just, it's going to go right up into S tier with these other ones. Hipster is just stupidly strong. You get so much extra ammo with it. Uh, it lowers your damage, but you can still hit breakpoints to where you can either spam fire this into crowds and kill crowds incredibly quick, or to where you can build full damage and use focus shots. That's just more ammo efficient than anything else that the uh, M1000 has. Um, it also reduces recoil by 50%, and it pretty much doubles your rate of fire. It, it's just, it's really strong, especially with how many builds work with it. Pretty much every build works with it, really. And then we've got active stability system. Active stability system... Uh, increases our reload slightly, but it increases our movement speed when we're in focus mode up to 100%, so we're moving around the same way we normally would, which is really handy with this weapon. And our focus speed is slightly faster at about 20%. Nice, I really like this. Uh, I think I'd still put it into B tier. Um, it's good, but I don't find myself taking it as much as like Minimal Clips or Hipster. Although to be fair, both of those are pretty crazy, so maybe this is A tier on the low end. And then we've got our Unstable Overclocks, where we have Super Cooling Chamber. This increases our maximum damage by a lot. We get 125% more charge shot damage, but our charge shots take longer. They're 40% slower. We can't move when we're using our focus shot, and we cut our ammo by a third. So this is a highly specialized overclock that's very punishing if you can't uh, accurately hit shots very often. I don't find myself taking this one all that much. I think it's too punishing for what you get out of it. Uh, this one I'd put into C tier. No, sorry, I put into C tier. It's it's just, it's too much investment to do what it does. Uh, then we have uh, electrocuting focus shots. This lowers our focus shot damage, but now our focus shots electrocute enemies so they deal damage to them. This one I don't really find all that useful either. This one I'd also put into C tier because at least with electrifying reload on the assault rifle, it makes a bit more sense with the assault rifle. Then we've got the Drac 25 plasma carbine, where our first one is the thermal liquid coolant. This one increases your cooling rate and decreases the heat per shot. Both really good for the Drac. Uh, just kind of what the Drac needs. It's very similar to like the uh, lightweight magazine for the Warthog. 
I'd put this one up into A tier. I found that it was really handy to have on this. I could see it being argued down into B tier, though, as it isn't necessary for the drag. And then we have impact deflection. This makes it so all of your bullets are bouncy. So this, this you actually stack up a lot of damage per second, especially against crowds. It's a very fun overclock to use, and it's nothing but a bonus. I would put this one into A tier. It is kind of easy to hit friends with, though, which is a little bit annoying. Then we have aggressive venting, which when I was first talking about this, I said this was D tier. And I don't fully feel that way anymore. Uh, we lose out on ammo. We have a slow, we have a faster overheat duration, so we come up out of the overheat quicker, which is good. And our cooling rate is lowered by a bit. That's not too bad because we do want high heat with this and we want to dump the magazine so that we can then overheat. It's pretty good with IFG grenades. I was using this pretty much with cryo grenades exclusively. And the IFG grenade makes a little bit more sense for this because you can slow all enemies near you, then use the heat, um, burn everything and fear everything away from you. That's pretty good. I still think that this is a fairly specialized overclock for the Drac, and it's not one of my favorite ones for it. I don't really like the, the way in which you play, but it's not D tier, like I said. It's not as bad as I made it out to be. It's, it, it is usable, and it can be pretty good. Um, I would put this one into B tier, which, I mean, I'm probably not going to put it higher than that just because of the way that you play with it. I don't really prefer playing that way. Uh, then we've got Rewiring Mod. Rewiring Mod lowers our overall ammo by a lot. We also have a longer overheat duration, but when we overheat our gun, we get ammo back to the gun. This is actually extremely ammo efficient for the uh, Drac. It's not as ammo efficient as some of the other overclocks for scout weapons, though, at least primaries, because Hipster and um, Minimal Eclipse, I think, are much better than this. I think the thermal coolant is also kind of better for this in most instances. Um, even though you're not going to be getting as much ammo out of thermal coolant as you would this, it's still less of an inconvenience, and this is not a good one to be taking on like escort missions or on salvage missions. Um, those two in particular, it's not going to help that much, because if your gun is overheating during a fight where you can't move from a position, that's not a good thing. <laughs> so this one I'm going to put into B tier. Still has its place, uh, still can be useful, but uh, if I want more ammo efficiency, I'll likely go with uh, one of the M1000s, or I'll go with the uh, GK2, or I'll just go with one of the clean ones for the Drac in the first place. Then we move on to the unstable overclocks. Our first one is thermal exhaust feedback. This one makes it so once we hit a 50% heat meter on our rifle, we start dealing fire damage as well as heat damage to enemies. So we start building up their heat meter and they can catch fire. This stacks on damage and this uh, builds up more damage the more heat that we get. Uh, we do have more heat per shot and we do have a longer overheat duration. This does, like I said, stack up damage really fast though. Um, if you can flutter it on there, if you can micromanage enough, then this one is really strong. Uh, originally I put this one into S tier out of Scouts ones, and now thinking back, I don't know if it's quite S tier, really. It's, it's strong, and if you're willing to manage the heat, it's good. If you don't want to do that, though, it, it is kind of annoying to be using. And this is only real strong in hordes and against single targets, single big targets. Uh, and shooting just regular stuff, it's going to work the same way as the, the regular Drac. So maybe this one I would put into A tier. Uh, I can see it being argued back into S tier, though. It is really good. I did put it in S tier before, and I could see myself putting it there, too. Uh, I don't know. I, I think I'll put it into A tier right now. I could see some of these other ones in A tier also moving up to S tier. We'll talk about that at the end of the video, I guess. Uh, then we've got Shield Battery Booster. So this one increases your ammo, increases your rate of fire, but it also increases your heat per shot, and it decreases your cooling rate. This can also increase your damage so long as your shield is at full. Your shield does have to be completely full. If you're even missing a point of it, it doesn't count. You do want to build for this, and you can't take this on missions. Well, I guess you could, but it's not going to help you that much on missions that have, like, shield disruption. Um, it's also not going to work in all biomes very well, like the Magma Core... Um, and the fungus bog, I wouldn't recommend taking this at all there. The damage boost is pretty significant, and if you can avoid taking damage for a long time, this is actually going to give you a, a huge amount of advantage. I think this gives you the most amount of damage that you could have with the plasma carbine. Um, 
I think unless the rewiring mod might, but that's kind of weird. Or I guess aggressive venting, depending on how many enemies are around, or even impact deflection, depending on how many enemies are around. Either way, this is probably going to be a, a high amount of damage, and if you can keep yourself uh, out of harm's way, can be good. Like I said, it is very restricting, though. You can't take it on certain missions. Uh, you're susceptible to friendly fire to where you don't get a bonus from this. Um, uh, it's not really my favorite, and I think I'm still going to put it into C tier because it is real specialized. For people who are willing to take the risk of using it, it has a huge amount of promise to it, though. I want to make that clear. Just because I'm putting it in a C tier does not mean that I dislike it, um, or does not mean that it's necessarily worse than the other overclocks that we've talked about. It's potentially the best overclock for the Drac if you, um, can maintain a high shield and of course you don't want to overheat it because if you do overheat it the overheat lasts twice as long lasting five seconds which that's a bummer and it breaks your shield if your shield's already broken though or your shield's nearly broken and you overheat it not a big deal um but it, it's still something to take into consideration so this one i think out of all of these probably has the highest potential value out of any of them uh, maybe bullet hell could be argued for that too, because you can potentially get a lot of value out of that, but that's relying on RNG where this is relying on skill, but, uh, accidents happen all the time. You might take fall damage. You might take a bit of damage, you know, from walking on a cactus or something. Then we have the overtuned particle accelerator. This one increases our damage by a lot. Um, and this one decreases our ammo, which does kind of suck. Our heat per shot is also increased, and our spread is massively increased. This makes our gun fairly inaccurate at longer ranges. Um, you can kind of work that with different builds if you want, uh, but it's still not going to be as accurate as it could be. It's really good at close range, especially for big single targets and for crowds. You can shred through them very fast. So I think Overtuned Particle Accelerator I'd put up into A tier. It's very good. Um, it's probably one of the best ones that the Drac has. Uh, at least if you want to do those jobs. All right, then we move on to our secondaries for Scout, which I'm running out of breath because I've been talking for nearly two hours now, having to do retakes and stuff. So with our jerry-rigged boomstick, we have uh, compact shells, which gives us more ammo and a faster reload. Great. The, the shotgun can benefit from that. It's all around fantastic. B tier, uh, you could argue it for A tier. Then we've got special powder. This one is hilarious. You get no real advantage, potentially. Uh, but now when you jump in the air and fire your shotgun, or I guess just in any direction, whether you're falling, jumping, whatever it might be, uh, so long as your feet aren't on the ground, you will fling yourself in the opposite direction that you fired the shotgun. So you can fling yourself upward, you can stop falls, which is really handy. You don't need to run hover boots. So if you like running hover boots, uh, you don't need to with this. You can fling yourself up to higher locations and then use your uh, grappling hook. You can pair this with hover clock and have a really fun time. All around fantastic. Everybody loves this one. I'm going to put it into S tier. Is it necessarily S tier? I don't know, but it's so much fun that it, I'll put it up there. Then we have stuff shells. This gives you one more pellet, one more damage per shot. Very good. Very strong. Uh, A tier. Then we've got double barrel. Double barrel is a pretty big disappointment. This gives you one more shot or one more, yeah, one more damage on each of your pellets, but you have to fire out each of your barrels every time that you shoot it. If you're only using your double barrel for big things, this is fine, but at the same time, you could take any of your other overclocks for this weapon, and they're all better than this one. You could just take something like the compact shells that we've talked about and get more ammo, and you'll do more damage. You could get stuff shells, which is even more damage, and then just take the tier two that lets you shoot faster, and you pretty much have double barrel anyway. Uh, this one, it's it's D tier. I wish it was better. Uh, it really should have some more damage on top of it. It's just, frankly, not that great at the moment. Uh, then we got shape shells. Shape shells are good. They uh, lower your pellet amount by one, but they lower your base spread by 50%. So you're accurate, and the shotgun actually has really long range then. It's kind of surprising how long a range it does have. Um, this one, I think I'm going to put into A tier as well. It feels really good for blasting things from a, a good distance away. And then we've got jumbo shells. This one lowers the amount of shells that you have. It also increases your reload time, but it increases your damage massively. 
Uh, this one's great for killing things like Praetorians, Dreadnoughts, Oppressors, anything like that. It's also great for killing crowds if you're running blow-through rounds too. Uh, jumbo shells are fantastic. I'd put them up into A tier too. And then we move on to the Zukovs, which our first overclock is Minimal Magazines. This uh, gives us a faster rate of fire and faster reload time. Good for the Zukovs, uh, B tier. And then we've got Custom Casings. This one lowers our rate of fire, but increases our total magazine size. Also pretty good. Uh, I like these, uh, another like B tier. Then we have Embedded Detonators, which Embedded Detonators lower our ammo by a lot, lower our magazine by a lot, and lower our damage by a lot. But now we have Embedded Detonators, so every shot that we hit enemies with and go to reload, those set off explosions inside the enemies, dealing damage to them, and you deal a lot of damage to them. This actually ramps up your damage a lot with the Zukovs. Um, it also makes you potentially have the highest amount of DPS, um, at least out of scouts, secondaries. I'm not sure about primaries. Probably the most out of primaries, too. Um, it's kind of hard to judge that, though. Uh, embedded detonators probably A tier. If they didn't lower your ammo so much, they might be S tier. Then we have gas recycling. Gas recycling increases your direct damage by 5, which is a real big bonus for the Zukovs. Uh, it increases your base spread by 50%, so they're less accurate. That is kind of annoying because the Zukovs aren't the most accurate to begin with. Um, this lowers your movement speed while shooting them from 100% to 50%. That's also a little bit annoying. And this lowers your weak spot damage bonus. Now, this does not affect the actual weak spot damage bonus that you get when you're hitting an enemy, but the initial bonus damage that the Zukovs have, which is 15%. That's not a huge deal. 15% of 12 who cares about that to start out with when you get five more base damage i'd rather have 17 damage a hit and then dealing double damage to grunt's heads uh, or slasher's heads or anything like that um this does not affect the weak spot damage you don't just lose out on weak spot damage entirely you lose out on that bonus 15 percent damage that you had when you were hitting weak spots before you were doing 12 damage uh, plus 15% and then uh, that's doubled. So you'd be doing 36. So you're not doing slightly as much damage as you would be otherwise um, with this, but your overall total damage is going to be higher because you're not going to be hitting weak spots every single shot with the Zukovs. This does make it very good for single target damage and it makes it really good for crowds. Uh, it makes it much more consistent than the regular Zukovs uh, normally are. So I'd put gas rerouting up into A tier. I think it's a pretty solid overclock. And then our last overclock is cryo minelets. Cryo minelets lowers our damage slightly, lowers our ammo slightly, at least in our magazines. But now we have cryo minelets that make it so when we shoot enemies, or sorry, when we shoot the ground, they uh, cause little cryo minelets to pop up where if any enemy walks across them, they'll explode. This can freeze enemies because it builds up their cold meter. And you can freeze enemies very easily with this. This is also really good if you go with the tier 4 blow through rounds because you can punch right through an enemy, hit the ground below them, set the cryo minelets there. Perfect. Uh, you can freeze hordes of enemies this way. It's extremely fun to use this. I think I'd put cryo minelets up into A tier as well. They're a pretty good overclock in my opinion. I don't think they're quite S tier. They're similar to like embedded detonators and stuff where they're good but maybe not there. So this is our list right now which as you can see there's a lot in A and B tier some in C tier and a few in D tier, not very many. Um, would I move any of these around? Potentially. Uh, I think right now I'm okay with them because it's going to be really difficult for me to move some of these around. Like maybe I move Sticky Flames to S tier, maybe Splintering Shells and Carpet Bomber to S tier, maybe Big Bertha to S tier. Uh, maybe some of these other ones, maybe Executioner up there, maybe Impact Deflection, Overtuned Particle Accelerator, I don't know. Maybe RJ250 because it's just so much fun. Uh, but this is the entire list of overclocks in Deep Rock Galactic up to this point. I will be doing this again once we get to these secondaries. I will also be doing this list once again. Probably not today, but another day uh, when I actually have a voice. <laughs> and we're going to be ranking them based on how fun they are, which that should be a lot of fun to make too. Hopefully you guys found this interesting. Uh, special thanks to my supporters of this channel. These are my YouTube members over here, as well as my patrons over on Patreon that get early access to videos like this. If you would like to be a part of that, you can check out the links in the description. Thanks everybody for watching this. I hope you have a great day. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.